Hi, this is Ed Olbaki with Honeywell. This is Jack Connell with Honeywell's Energy and Environmental Optimization Program. You're listening to Control Talk Now with Ken Smyers and Eric Stromquist. Hi, welcome to Control Talk Now. This is your host, Eric Stromquist, and I am joined, as usual, by the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, you know, Kenny and I, we're just a couple guys, been in the controls industry for a while, and Control Talk Now is all about talking about controls and what happened in the week, and hopefully getting you control news you can use. And, uh, Kenny, welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much, Uh and also thank uh, Earl and Jack for that uh, introduction. Appreciate it. It's good to see everybody get involved. Thank you. Yeah, well, as you know, Kenny, I was up last week uh, at Golden Valley. And if you've never been to Golden Valley, that's quite an experience, especially in the summertime. Not quite the same experience in January or February. But, uh, yeah, it was Earl Backey and uh, Jack Connell. And they were in the class I was at. We'll talk later more about that later in the show. But, uh, wow, great guys. Really, really good guys. Uh, Earl calls on our friends uh, Scott Toomey, Scott Cross, and Bob Barnaby out in Texas. He's a rep out there. Does a great job. Just a super, super fun guy, Kenny. Had a lot of fun with him. And uh, Jack uh, Connell, I've been, you know, I've known Jack for years. He's been with Honeywell for quite some time. And just a super, super good guy. Very, very interesting guy. He's, uh, you know, in his career with Honeywell, he lived in Japan for a year. But uh, great guy. And uh, he heads up that EEO, which is the Energy optimization uh efficiency optimization program that honeywell's putting on and again we'll talk more about that uh later in the show so kenny uh you know a lot of cool stuff going on um more and more people are listening to the podcast they seem to like that a lot so you can either listen to us uh on a podcast download it to your uh, your mp3 player or smartphone uh, what you get with the podcast is you can obviously listen to it whenever you want to. You can listen to it while you're going to work, while you're working out. Uh, and you can also watch the video portion. And when we try to make them a little bit different, uh, the content's the same. But obviously with the video portion, Kenny, um, we put some video stuff in there to try to keep it interesting. So uh, really, really happy about that. And want a, a special shout out to uh, our friend Dave Susky with Twinco. Uh, Dave sent us a very, very nice email. Uh, you know, he's apparently a big fan of the show and what we're doing on Control Trends. And we're big fans of uh, Dave, Ken, and Steve from Twinco that uh, are your Honeywell and Johnson distributors in New York City. So thanks, guys, for that. Really appreciate it. So, Kenny, let's uh, let's kick the week off with some of the things that are going on. What do we have up first? All right, Eric. First up, we have our uh, sponsor for the week uh, ending Control Talk. Now, week ending August 25th is DG Logic. Uh, DG Logic, uh, visualizing the Internet of Things. Um, can't say enough about the guys. Some great products, uh, great people, talent, and a uh, whole lot of enthusiasm. They're, they're changing the scope of our systems integration and the way we analyze data. Uh, they got some great things to say. They explain it well. And uh, they have, uh, you know, very compatible with Niagara framework. Um, they have... Um, you go on their site, uh, DD, uh, I'm sorry, www.dglogics.com. That's DG Logic with a K uh, to learn more about DG Lux, to view live applications, and introducing the DG Box. A very, very impressive product. Oh, yeah. Well, those guys, those guys are great, man. We talk about them a lot. We, uh, we finally call them the men in black. Uh, if nothing else, these guys, they make a great product, but they're probably also the most stylish guys in the controls industry. Eugene Mazzo. Uh, Dennis and Arthur. Uh, I understand Dennis and Arthur are both getting married in uh, September. I knew about Arthur, but when they were here visiting in town, Kenny, uh, Dennis basically said, I'll never get married. And so uh, Eugene tells me he's getting married. And of course, Eugene is a proud new dad. He has a beautiful little girl. So we've congratulated him before, but we'll do it again. And uh, we'll have a little bit more on DG Logics as our sponsor this week a little bit later in the show. So thanks, guys. We appreciate it. They're platinum sponsors of the 2013 Control Trends Awards, and uh, they actually won Best Graphical Tool last year. So we appreciate you. Kenny, what do we have up first? All right, Eric. Our first post was Honeywell eLearning Live. Uh, it was an opportunity to join Honeywell's Wi-Fi thermostat training. Uh, briefly, Honeywell eLearning training opportunities are coming uh, monthly, and this one was about uh, 
Millions of homes today are equipped with Wi-Fi enabled devices and while a consumer might not understand the technology, they certainly understand what it allows them to do on a daily basis. Uh, I think we're going to see more and more of this type of uh, presentation as far as learning how products work and having the opportunity to uh, learn about new markets that you're not quite familiar with. So uh, Honeywell does a great job and uh, we'd recommend all uh, all Control Trends community people to get familiar with Honeywell eLearning Life. Si sign up for it and then you'll get the uh, you'll get the weekly and monthly notices of what's coming next. Yeah, you know, when I was in Golden Valley, I got to spend some time with Amy Anderson, who does Honeywell's marketing, and, you know, she is just an awesome individual, and, and they're putting a lot of time and energy and money, Kenny, into making information more accessible, and if you go to, uh, I think it's honeywell.customer.com, uh, but they're getting ready to change that. We'll keep that posted, but I know Amy and her team are working uh, to create a new site that's going to be more user, even more user friendly. But uh, they're spending a lot of time with these e-learning, and you know it makes so much sense because we, I mean, we just don't have most of us the time to go to classes. That's almost a luxury. But being able to get access to great training like Honeywell's putting together uh, on their e-learning site just makes a whole lot of sense. So um, hats off to uh, Amy and her team. It was good seeing you last week, and be sure to to check that e-learning out. Uh, I think, Kenny, you got a link there on the control trend, so you can sign up and get access not to just that training, but to all the great e-learning trainings that, uh, that Honeywell has up on their website. That's right, Eric. Um, next up, we have uh, the, let's see, we got Clint back. Oh, Clint uh, did a post on the uh, thermostats. Yeah, where's that uh, boy been? I tell you what, we've been missing him, huh? Well, he put the, it took him a while, but he did a good job, did a lot of, uh, made the analogy again of the horse race. Uh, Completing the second quarter, he has uh, the five top thermostats in the race are Nest, Honeywell, InTouch, Viconics, and Echobee. And uh, there's a, an analogy there using the, the fabulous racehorses of, of the past and, and uh, the accomplishments they did using the, the measure of the tape to use uh, criteria that uh, Secretariat, for instance, was the fastest, uh, let's see, the fastest horse uh, in, in the certain uh, the quarter mile, or no, not the quarter mile, the... Uh, one and three sixteenths mile to one and five eighths mile. Fastest horse on dirt. Um, the man of war, the big red, uh, compared to Honeywell. Uh, never was was ne <laughs> testing testing was never legitimately beaten. Um, going back to Secretariat, that's uh, Nesta's Secretariat. Honeywell's man of war. In touch of citation, and Viconics is Minoro, and Echobee is Northern Dancer. We'll start from the bottom down. Echo B Northern Dancer was considered uh, by many to be the greatest Canadian racehorse of all time. And uh, that's like uh, the Echo B thermostat and the Echo B company. Uh, they're recognized by the Canadian, uh, what was it, the Scotia Echo Living Awards for the business leadership and uh, having the free home IQ energy report, which makes it easy for homeowners to track their energy savings. Uh, we recommend everybody to see that post on Control Trends and to visit Echo B. Uh, next up was Viconics. Minoro uh, did some research on that. That's a European horse from France, and um, it was number one horse of the year, uh, according to many of the uh, horse experts, um, and had an incredible range from the mile to the mile and a half. That's where I got that reference. So Schneider Electric's uh, Viconics is, was winner of the 2012 thermostat of the year and had that range. That's one of the reasons why uh, Viconics was such a popular thermostat. Was It was an a la carte thermostat. You could select the features that you needed, and it was uh, had a great rescue uh, potential there if you had the wrong communication protocol you could change it in the field and you could add the uh, the PIR feature on the, you know, for occupancy in the field so the 5000 series for Viconics was a very uh, had a wide range thermostat was very successful in the market in touch with Citation Big Psy uh, Cessna Aircraft uh, was so impressed the owner of Cessna Aircraft that he put the horseshoe in the Jets logo to uh, uh, to make the analogy of the incredible performance and endurance of this horse uh, to the uh, business uh, aircraft the Cessna business jet uh, in touch is much the same way. They they streamlined the wireless communication for uh, HVAC uh, HVAC optimization and integrated gateway functions. Uh, it's designed for the needs of the smaller commercial facility. Uh, continuing uh, back to Nest and Secretariat and Honeywell and Man Award. This is uh, probably one of the most exciting races in terms of uh, taking the thermostat to the next level with the uh, value added smarts to join the grid. And uh, they're already taking orders uh, with some giant projects of uh, note. Uh, west and in the Midwest, uh, and um, it's good to know that when America and, and the energy needs uh, become, you know, a common uh, interest item and a problem, saving energy and becoming more efficiency, that we have great products to put into play, and it's just not one or two. That there's many, 
and uh, they're all they've already proven themselves. They're already uh, tried and tested. It's not an experiment anymore. It's just a matter of getting smart and putting them to use. All right, last up, uh, Eric, on that was that um, the thermostat uh, war, not war, that's a poor choice of words, contest is um, really heating up because there's other thermostats out there. We're getting uh, comments uh, from, from around the world that uh, it's not just an American market. And even though some of these thermostats are globally designed, we have other uh, thermostats coming from around the, the world saying that we also make a good thermostat. And uh, we, in temperature controls, and, and they're wondering what a thermostat is. So it's really interesting, Eric, and it's going to be a great, um, a great contest uh, for the Control Trends Awards. Well, yeah, Kenny, I think you know last year that uh, the thermostat was one of the most hotly contested uh, uh, competitions there was. It was very, very close. Uh, and I think over the last year with the automated demand response and and what we're seeing with that, I mean, the programmable thermostat is becoming. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, a really, really uh, big deal, right? And like just part of what we did with this EEO training was we were studying different energy rates. And I mean, I found this thing in Georgia, one of the small municipalities in Georgia would pay up to $500 uh, towards uh, installing a programmable thermostat. And, you know, we talk a lot about automated demand response, but the thermostat is becoming more and more the hub of what's going on, especially with the smaller buildings, Kenny. And, you know, we've talked a lot about people like InTouch and even easy out how everybody is playing in that small to mid-size space. And thermostats are right at the hub. So it was a very, very interesting uh, post from our friend Clint. He, uh, I guess, being a cowboy at heart, he uh, <laughs> did some great analogies. And, of course, horse racing is a, is a pretty spectacular horse. And all those horses he wrote about and the stories of all of them. You talk about an inspiration, Kenny. I mean, that's just that's some good stuff. Really, really good stuff. What do we have up next, big dog? All right, uh, next up, Eric, was um, BMW not included. Uh, this is just an example of, of some of the uh, global products coming to, to bear in the American market. Uh, this particular post was a video. It's, uh, it's really kind of a spicy one. That uh, European uh, marketing is a little bit different and more elegant probably than the American style. But um, it's a flashy welcome to Thermocon and Thanos and modern living. Um, European marketing is different from the American marketing, but it's certainly as impacting, and, and they get the message across. Uh, Thermocon Americas is a well-known multinational company found in 1987 that specializes in the manufacturing of traditional sensors, peripherals, and controls for building controls in HVAC industries. Now, this is an interesting line that's going to grow, and in in, in, it's going to come to bear, in, again, in the American market because they're introducing a lot of in-ocean products. Hang on, Kenny. i got to interrupt real quick. For our podcast listeners, what you're missing is a girl just got out of bed, and she's getting in the shower, and these Thermocon sensors are on. And now it looks like she's getting ready to... Uh is she gonna is she gonna take her robe off and go swimming or something, Kenny? <laughs> yeah, she does a dip. In oh, the there she is. All right, right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> wow, those Europeans are pretty racy with what they do, big dog. So, but anyway, keep talking. I'm I'm enjoying the scenery here. <laughs> and well, the uh, the Thermocon and this uh, product line that they're bringing in is is going to catch everybody kind of by surprise if you don't do your homework. And Ocean is growing in the wireless world along with Zigbee. Okay, the products, there's more and more of them, and they're more and more uh, proven. You know, no more experiments. Just you, can't, you can't afford to not know what's going to happen. You have to know specific outcomes, and you have to bid for them, and they have to prove themselves in the field. But now we're seeing that uh, these are non-powered actuators coming out of Thermocon, where you can actually have uh, your hydronic system, your hot water valves are, are battery-operated and, and power steering uh, from the environment uh, using uh, different technologies. But so you're looking at a wireless environment that's coming more and more uh, into being here in the in North American market. So uh, Thermocon, you're going to hear more about them, and they've got some really neat products. Yeah, I agree, Kenny. And, and I think the thing about those guys, too, is uh, you know they're right on the – the, you know, with the in ocean, they make a lot of really good in ocean sensors, which go with products like the Can to Go that you and I are both handling, as well as a bunch of uh, the other people in the industry. So, yeah, I think that uh, self powering and the and the flexibility is 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 a big big piece. So, really good poster. I like that video. That's good stuff. What's up next, big dog? All righty, we got Mark's Coal Tools again, shining a light on safety. Uh, this is an interesting post because uh, I like how Mark he's enthusiastic, and he's knowledgeable, but um, there's a uh, real practicality. Its flashlight has a dual purpose. It also brings a, uh, it's one of those, um, what do you call those things? Uh, stun guns, I guess we called them. But uh, basically, they have, uh, you know, the battery produces a high voltage and it'll, it'll give you temporary uh, 
a relief from somebody, an aggressor or a dog or something. It's just something you can have in your toolbox. Now, we're not promoting that. We're just saying that if you do uh, think it's necessary, it's a, a pretty cool two-in-one um, product. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and our team had a, a lot of fun doing this. Uh, Mark is a pretty dry character. Uh, we, we mentioned him before. We've, he's been doing a weekly thing with the uh, Mark School Tools. And uh, th he had a lot of fun with this. Uh, he, <laughs> he's got this flashlight that actually has a taser in it. And, of course, uh, he's such a dry guy, we decided we'd ham it up a little bit. So a couple of his coworkers got together with him. And, uh, and so uh, they got to practice their action hero stuff. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, Mark has basically got a flashlight and it's got a taser on it. And uh, I think one of the comments he makes is sometimes you just have a bad day and need to take your aggressions out. And uh, one of his coworkers comes up and he zaps him. So, <laughs> so no, uh, no animals were hurt in the production of this. Uh, we don't advocate violence with this. Uh, and no humans were hurt uh, badly. So anyway, Mark uh, Sayon. Uh, CW, thanks so much, man. That was that was good stuff. So we we really uh, really enjoyed that post. What do we have up next, Kenny? All right, Eric. Next up is August twenty second. Uh, DOE live webinar on street and parking facility light retrofits financial analysis tool. Now, again, the Department of Energy is providing a lot of information that's very valuable and very useful uh, for people in our industry. Um, we have a lot of great products out there, and this is how they got to get into uh, the markets is using these programs, becoming uh, you know familiar but to, you know just sign up for it it's pre-registrations required for all of the seminars but once you get on the EERE's federal energy management program you get those notifications so if you're interested great you don't have to go looking for it you just hit a, you know the URL get back on it register and then you get your um, your reminder it goes right to your calendar um, depends on what uh, what kind of software system you're using but uh, mine goes right onto my calendar so my appointment uh, calendar tells me I have that seminar coming up but again, uh, U.S. Department of Energy is doing uh, everything it can to uh, in, to bring uh, people's awareness up to you know and, and promote energy uh, savings and energy uh, savings participation. Yeah, Kenny, I, I think there's just so much out there, and and especially you know after spending the week up at Honeywell with the EEO training, uh, boy, you know you start looking into these incentives, and I really think you know we'll talk more about it, but I think that part of uh, you know what a good systems integrator or distributor is going to be doing is is finding. Uh, you know some of these programs and and what's available with that. So uh, it was a good post. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, you know try to provide the community with those sorts of uh, posts and information so they can help their customers find ways to save energy. So that was a good post, Kenny. What do we have next, buddy? Well, uh, just uh, we'll be seeing more about that, and a few more posts are going to come up with that information. We did do some uh, some legwork on that uh, to carry that to the next level. So please stay with the. Uh, the program uh, because it, we have this, some more valuable information. Next up, uh, why don't you tell us about the easy way to configure a PID loop in a Honeywell HC900. Uh, I understand it's a post from John Rowe and AC Controls. Yeah, well, uh, AC Controls is a Honeywell industrial distributor like we are. They're over in the Carolinas, and, and these guys just do a fantastic job. Uh, Jim Borders, uh, he, he's like a second-generation company. His dad started the company. He's got some great guys working for him. This guy, John Rowe, I mean, you got to watch the video. He starts it off with a superhero uh, imitation, you know, and, and he kind of is a superhero. So it, but he's a really knowledgeable guy. And this HC900, uh, we see it a lot on the industrial side, Kenny. It's, it's essentially a PLC that does PID loops really, really well. And for those people who've worked with uh, PLCs, I mean, they do a lot of ladder logic. They do a lot of stuff really well. But uh, you can do PID loops and PID loops, but, uh, you know, it takes a lot of programming. So uh, Honeywell Industrial came up with this product, the HC900. And this thing is great. It's got a lot of the ladder, ladder logic in it, but what it really, really, really does well, Kenny, is it, uh, it does a PID loop. So in an industrial plant, if you got say 15, 20, 30 single loop controllers, you want to bring them all in under one uh, controller, you can do that with this HC900. So it's a really cool product. Our industrial customers like it a lot. And um, it, it has its applications. If, for you guys who have done the Honeywell Delphi system, uh, that's an HC900 that's actually the brains of that. So they're actually, uh, you're going to see more of this product. I think it's a niche product. Uh, where you don't want a full-blown DD uh, PLC system, or you have a lot of PID loops and you want to control them, and uh, you know, rumor has it, uh, you know, Honeywell is getting ready to roll out uh, probably a whole new flame safeguard platform uh, coming up 
in the next year or so. And I don't know for sure, but my guess is that this HT900 might be at the heart of it. But they're already using it with the Honeywell Delphi system. Cool, cool product. So, uh, and hey, John Rowe, you are a superhero, buddy. Great job. Appreciate the video. All right, Kenny, what do we have up next, buddy? All right, Eric, next up was uh, Sky Foundry's John Petsy on Control Talk 2.0. Uh, Sky Foundry features SkySpark, a revolutionary new technology for transforming smart device data into business solutions. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that post? That was a repost, actually, wasn't it? Well, it actually was a repost. Uh, uh, John is just a super, super uh, guy, uh, and, you know, we've, we've got to know him at uh, Haystack Connect. Uh, and, I mean, you know, Kenny, I mean, I tell you what, talk a bit about uh, John's background because I tell you what, he, you know, he's kind of one of the who's who in the industry. And, you know, he gives a little bit of his background history and, 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 uh, and I think that'll sort of set it up for what we have to say about uh, Sky Foundry because we know he was a tritium, right? Oh, well, he's, uh, when you, you uh, brought that to uh, light at the Realcom 2013 when uh, you said about the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, well, John Petsy certainly fits that mold. Uh, he's been uh, a leader at several different uh, companies, you know, Andover, uh, Tritium. Uh, he's just a dynamic person, and, and he knows the business from the, the ground up. In other words, uh, a lot of people you, you kind of come from a different industry. You got to take over things where they're at, so you, you don't have that history. You don't understand what happened beforehand and all the the turmoil and all the uh, achievements that were made along the way to make that product special and, and to be successful in the marketplace. Well, if you, you combine that once, twice, three times, and then he went over and, and worked with the um, Cisco, uh, and there was some thing, big things brewing there. And, uh, you know, John is just, a, he's a C-level player that can move, you know, very comfortably and, and take over a marketing program and, and, and even a new product platform. So he started uh, Sky Foundry, uh, and uh, his success is, uh, you know, a testament to how well he, you know, just how much of a stalwart he is in the industry. Yeah, for sure, and and it was great. We got I got to actually do a Skype interview with John, and that's what we actually have posted. Uh, and just a fascinating individual, Kenny. He really is. I mean, he is one of the the, the truly um, you know great people in our industry. And you know, and I think um, Sky Foundry's right at the middle of this whole Haystack Connect uh, thing, where you know you're able to pass that up to the analytics. But uh, you know, in terms of analytic platforms, I think John is he's the guy, and he understands it from. Uh, from you know the controller level all the way uh, up to the top. So uh, really appreciated John taking the time to uh, come talk to us. And yeah, we did repost it. It, it, it had been a while, and uh, we, when we get something good like that, it's just worth uh, putting it back up again. So thanks again, John. And what do we have up next, Kenny? All right, Eric. Next up was James Johnson instructs the Vicon Pro Training September 30th class, uh, which is almost full. So there's a call out there to act now. Um, interestingly enough, we had a, an inquiry to uh, a couple of posts on, on control transmission, one of them to this about uh, a question, a technical question that, that would have been answered. Um, I had sent back a, a response that attend this Vicon Pro Training class, and, and you can see how you can uh, control six to eight. Um, I think it was chillers. Uh, it was a question was regarding chillers, but uh, you know James Johnson is another who's who uh, in the industry. Deep, deep background, deep uh, understanding of, of the Niagara platform and some of the incredible uh, op options that you have that aren't aren't, aren't on the surface. So you got to dig a little bit deeper, and you need guided through some of those uh, some of those um, intricate uh, you know things like uh, you know the PX graphic design, export tags, Niagara provisioning, web supervisor best practices, histories, BF format basics, um, robot editor, you know, just there's several Vicon Pro tools. And, and you, if you go to this course, it takes you to the next level. And James is probably one of the best instructors that I've ever met. And he's really passionate about his job and he loves it. He loves his job. Yeah, Kenny. I mean, he does. And of course, James was uh, also the co-winner of the uh, best technical support year the best best technical support person of the year at the 2012 control trends awards and you're right he is very passionate about what he does uh, you know it's a lot of people in our industry are kenny i mean i think that's one of the one of the reasons we wanted to do the control trends awards is that we got we have so many great people in our industry that really really care and they just really don't get the recognition they deserve but uh, james is a super super guy uh and great technical support very very knowledgeable so this is this is a class you probably don't want to miss right kenny right and again it's not uh, for the weak uh, the fainted heart this is for people that are, are responsible to come up with solutions uh you know to eliminate duplicities and take advantage of the technology in other words 
<clears throat> the Niagara uh, framework and platform has so much more to it than just just what most people are using it. And uh, I think when you have this kind of exposure, you're able to take your integrations, especially as we're talking about the Master Systems Integrator and some of the things that are being required, some of the higher level integrations, not just with uh, integrating you know various uh, disparate protocols, but actually you know deriving value from the data and 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 uh, you know and making those. Uh, important cookie cutter things that do the work for you you know get getting work done while you're sleeping these robotic programs can go out there and fetch all the information and, and organize it and present it to you so we wake up in the morning you're looking at a uh, you're looking at a you know some sort of aggregated information instead of doing the work manually again so uh, just really clever stuff and, and again James does a great job of instructing it so sometimes you go to training and you forget it before you on the plane ride home and then sometimes you get it and you put it right into your into play, you put it right into your next project, and it becomes uh, the staple that you're measured by because you can do things other people can't do. So it's just a really, uh, I think, a, a great investment, and and it's very competitive. There's only 15 or so many chairs in that class, and they sell out, and you just have to wait another quarter to uh, attend it next time it's offered. Yeah, I, I agree. So, what do we have up next, Mr. Kenny? All right, this goes back to what we're talking about the thermostats and the open energy information. Open EI. This was another uh, source that we found that uh, open energy information is a knowledge sharing online community dedicated to connecting people with the latest energy information and data. This is a neat site and they provide a lot of information. Uh, and I would highly recommend people go and control trends and hit that direct button there. Um, one of the most important things it, it, it led to was uh, again, you pull the string, it had 525 programmable thermostat incentives. So I clicked that, and then uh, it took me to a couple more uh, things. So by the time it got done, I was able to find the Pennsylvania Utility Commission. I finally found the motor and variable frequency drive inventory forms, how to fill them out. There's a manual there, uh, Pennsylvania Act 129 Motor and VFD Audit and Design Tool. And then they also had the same thing for the thermostats. So all of a sudden now, I'm not dependent on somebody else. If I want to help a customer get uh, rebates or see if they can become, or if they're applied, if they can apply for and receive grants that help offset the uh, cost to put new drives in or whatever, now I actually I have a much better uh, rapport with the people because I can give them the, I can give it to them. I don't have to go to the, uh, energy, uh, or I don't have to go to the utility and, and then act dumb. I can just say, here's what we've done. This is what we're eligible for. And the other one was the Pennsylvania. Act 129 Lighting and Audit and Design Tool, which is another. It tells you how everything's done. So it just makes you a better, more consummate salesman. And that'll be one of the final, uh, what do you call it, posts we have today will be how to be a better salesperson uh, in this uh, evolving market. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Hey, but Kenny, let's take a minute. Let's get a, have a word from this week's sponsor, DG Logic. Welcome back. Hey, Kenny, what a cool video from those guys, huh? The men in black, they really know their stuff. All right, Kenny, so what do we have up next? 
All right, Eric. Next up, we have Contemporary Controls. A BAS Remote Master receives Tritium Sedona Framework Certification. Uh, you'll tell us a little bit more here in a second, but I can say that Contemporary Controls offers a one-cable solution and the flex flexible building blocks to help any integrator deal with uh, additional remote input-output requirements. Well, yeah, I think, uh, Kenny, you know, if you think about it, um, uh, our friend George Thomas, we've talked about George before. Uh, from Contemporary Controls, I mean, I think you and I both agree he's probably one of the smartest guys that uh, that we know. And George is, is slated to come on and do an interview with us in September, so we're looking forward to that. But, you know, part of what's happening now, Kenny, with Control Trends because of the community is, is, is a lot of these vendors, when they have an important announcement to make, they typically send us a press release so that we can post it. And we received this from uh, Contemporary Controls and put it right up. But uh, needless to say, in terms of the routers and things like that, uh, Contemporary controls is, is is all over it. So uh, the post speaks for itself. Check it out and uh, look. Stay tuned to Control Trends for our interview with George Thomas coming up. Kenny, what was next? All right, Eric. Next up was day one of Honeywell EEO training. A word with Mark Jewell. Uh, briefly, uh, you're going to tell us about it, and I can't wait to meet Mark. Uh, I, I I love his participation with Control Trends, and he's he's getting behind us and uh, sharing our information with his community. But um, the sales information that I saw in his training course, uh, is, I think it's a, very important for everybody in the business to realize that you know there's new things going on, there's new technologies, and just as important, there's new sales techniques, and there's new presentations, and there's new styles, and the days of the PowerPoint are kind of fading, they're never going to go away completely, but you know, spreadsheets that are talking and, and going right to, you know, connecting to, uh, you know, videos, and just there's a whole advanced level of selling that's, that's happening around us, and the uh, one of the cool things I saw from Mark's video was just that sometimes we're aiming at the wrong people. We're, we're trying to sell energy efficiency in, in numbers and cents, and we're missing the biggest part of the person's is their heart and soul. They're losing money, but not just simply because they're not energy efficient. It's because they can't get something else done. And Eric, you're going to tell us uh, what, what, what is Mark's solutions? How does, it, how does Mark suggest you get around those barriers and get to the, the bottom of things that you can really help your customers? Well, uh, let me just start by saying we met Mark. Um, the first time he spoke at Honeywell Momentum, he has been hired by Honeywell to uh, work with their distributors and systems integrators. I mean, if they're, uh, I can give you, that's, to me, Honeywell has great products, but in and of itself, Kenny, I mean, just to have access to Mark Jewell is uh, is worth its weight and gold, that EEO program. So, you know, Mark does, uh, does day one of it. And hey, listen, let's just have Mark tell you a little bit about uh, day one with EEO. Mark? The day one is basically reframing the whole efficiency sale. So it's less about kilowatts, kilowatt hours, and therms, and more about what the customer really cares about. Maybe it's productivity, maybe it's decreased scrap rate, maybe it's increased milk production, maybe it's something else that you really care about. It tethers the emotion to the decision and then backs up with financials. So it's a, it's a really packed day. Yeah, and as you can tell, you know, Mark's uh, big thing is he's talking about, Kenny, he's talking about reframing. Uh, and I think one of the messages he took away is most of us as controls guys, we focus on the technical. And I think, you know, Kenny, if you think about one of the things we learned at uh, Ibicon Realcom with Jim Young and listening to the real estate people talk, I mean, it's not a one-person decision anymore. There are probably eight or nine people that are involved in making uh, the decision. Now, that is coming from... Uh, the, the, the real estate people like Daryl Smith uh, and some of the people we met at Realcom. So I think what Mark is really um, talking about is how do you talk to different people? And he says most people just get hung up on the technical and the energy savings. So uh, a lot of it is about, you know, how do you reframe? How do you sell? I don't want to give too much of this away because, uh, you know, Jack Connell put this program together and, and, you know, I view it and I think they view it as a real competitive advantage for uh, you know, Honeywell Systems Integrators. But, uh, but hey, I, I did get a chance to catch up with Jack Connell, too. So, Jack, um, why do you guys do this? Tell us a bit about why you're doing this and, and what do you have to say about the uh, Honeywell EEO program. So, Energy and Environmental Optimization is a program designed to help contractors grow their business using energy as the, and that value-based proposition as the way to go to that growth. Honeywell is interested in, in investing in helping the contractors to grow their business. That's basically the bottom line. Okay, so Kenny, I mean... I think you can see from what uh, what uh, Jack is saying that uh, they put a lot of time and energy into this and a lot of resources. It was a really, really good three days up there. Uh, there was no fluff. It was it was it was very rigorous. 
we all wound up having to do presentations. Uh, there were real life scenarios that we worked through. We had to go through not only the energy analysis, but the business analysis and um, the payback analysis. And actually, you know, one of the things you'll learn there is simple payback is a fool's errand. So, you know, how do you talk internal rate of return, modified rate of return, um, those financial numbers and how do those make sense? Uh, how do you look at somebody's lease to figure out how they can actually get these systems financed from their tenants? Uh, it's just a wealth of knowledge. These courses are filling up very, very quickly, uh, Kenny. So what I would recommend you do if you are a Honeywell Systems Integrator, reach out to your Honeywell Systems Integrator distributor. Tell them you're interested in attending one of these programs. And I think the flow sort of goes like you do the EEO. You get a day with Mark Jewell. Mark's not inexpensive. And that's kind of like going to college. And then if you're really crazy, uh, you can go on and get your master's degree and spend a week with Mark Jewell. Uh, but, but that guy is just amazing. He's awesome. So is Jack. So I can't say enough about this uh, program, Kenny. I, th I think this is the difference now is going to be the people that can communicate the value and not just the energy savings, but the value of a system. And Honeywell has done a great job of putting this in a frame that's going to give you a huge competitive advantage. So be sure to reach out to your local Honeywell systems integrator distributor, get to one of these classes. All right, Kenny, what do we have up next? So, uh, sorry, Eric. I just wanted to go back because you told me about one of the uh, items that uh, you guys covered, and I just thought it was a great one to remind everybody. And that was on the metering, the in inlet side of your water for your water tower and the outlet side that was going to the water sewage that you were being charged on it. And the water credits you got through the evaporation and, and the internal consumption of the water, whatever happens to the water, it's not the same. And there's credits available. So that if you invest in an inlet meter to measure water going in and then a metering uh, meter to uh, measure the water going out, you deduct the one from the other. Those are savings that are being lost to a lot of people. You know, the, yeah, with the cooling tower, you're absolutely right, Kenny. So the you know the assumption is that uh, because it's a sewage charge. So if you check your utility bill, there's typically a sewage charge, and you're being charged by the gallon for that. And if the water's evaporating through your cooling tower, well, guess what? You're not. They're not having to treat that water. It's evaporating. So that's just a very small uh, sort of thing they gave us where you can go in and become value to your customer and by adding a meter but but even knowing that that's an option is a huge piece yeah Barb Barnaby down there in uh, Amcon down in Texas uh, had a real nice uh, application where they used uh, some Mavericks uh, smart metering Mavericks uh, a while back and um, they were accepted by the state of Texas or whoever the local uh, jurisdiction having authority accepted that that concept to meet their uh, to get the water credit uh, they used that ma metering, metering maverick. All right, Eric, next up is the five pivot points for week of 34. Um, Ken's post uh, where I hit the hit the five uh, you know, same suspects where you have big data, visualization, analytics, cybersecurity, and the smart grid open ADR. We'll have posts, I'll have a post and links uh, and information on those five subjects. And that takes us to uh, one of our final categories, which is Eric's favorite video of the week. Well, my favorite video, and I haven't posted it yet, Kenny, but I will. I'm sorry to our audience, but uh, there was a TED Talk, and I think we mentioned TED before. Those are just amazing. They're free, but it's like experts from around the world talking about different things. We actually were shown this video, this TED, particular TED Talk, uh, at the Honeywell EEO training. But uh, the, 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 the guy who did it is a guy who wrote a book called Predictably Irrational. And uh, this will open your eyes. It'll really get you thinking about whether you really make decisions uh, or not. So uh, be prepared. Check that out. It's good stuff. And then put that in the context of that's coming. The people at Honeywell are talking about this sort of thing at the EEO. So, again, another reason to become a Honeywell Systems Integrator and just so you can get to this class. So good stuff there, Kenny. And um, I think, you know, we – the big things we got coming up this week, big dog, are we're uh, we're getting ready to put the ballots out, the 2013 Control Trends Awards nomination ballots. Let's talk a little bit about that. Right, Eric. Uh, Stacy will be sending out the uh, nomination forms uh, for the Control Trends community and the Control Trends Awards group. Uh, if you see the email, please act on it. This is the opportunity right now to do what we're trying to do at, at the core level, and that is recognize the people the products and the solutions that make our industry uh, important and, and you know these are the bona fides this is where you can put in uh, you know who you think has the best thermostat the best commercial product of the year the best automation graphic tool building energy management building automation controller of the year vendor technical support person of the year 
um, or, and also vendor technical support of the year from a vendor perspective or vend vendor support package. And then you have individuals, I'm sorry. During automation system of the year, commercial HVAC controls vendor of the year, uh, person of the year, the PID award, passion, integrity, and dedication, and the HVAC controls executive of the year. These are going to be expanded upon with three other uh, categories, Eric. Uh, energy, lighting, and uh, the small vendor peripheral device category. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, this is still not firm, I mean, uh, and one thing I wanted to say was that we, we got enough feedback, and no feedback is enough feedback to make a change, and that was on the combustion category. Uh, it, it didn't have any any uh, merit, no one uh, responded to it, so uh, the other ones that we asked for, people did respond to it, but if nobody's interested in it, then certainly not something we're going to try to carry and promote and take the next level. No, agreed, Kenny. And you know, I think we got that piece from uh, Sarah Montaloni from uh, Connect Air. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, you know, we think in terms of the big companies, and, and they certainly are important, but boy, we have a lot of, uh, you know, smaller companies. I, what I mean is in size. So, you know, Sarah suggested that we have a category uh, for the smaller companies that maybe do a great peripheral device or, or you know, to your point, I mean, the combustion, we didn't get anybody to really respond to that. But that's not to say that maybe uh, somebody like Testo or somebody like that uh, might or have. Or Backrack, uh, you know. Or Backrack, Testo, Backrack, somebody like that could uh, could step in and, and, and participate participate in that category. So uh, that I think that smaller company peripheral device, and that could be anybody from ACI to uh, pretty much anybody, Connect oh, Air yeah, yeah, certainly yeah. fits that category. Veris, uh, Logica, you know, I mean, there's just so many people out there that make it, functional devices, you know, the great products, and, and, and people are using them like toilet paper. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously they're successful. Uh, but they don't they don't meet uh, they're not getting into the limelight and their people are doing all those great things and all those products support people the engineers uh, the customer support you know groups that uh, go to work every day and sell millions upon millions of dollars worth of uh, product in our markets right and they make our control the control systems better I mean without those you're you're not going to have the same quality of control system so we want to shine a light on those companies so that's the, that's the intent of that category so uh, you know the way again the way it will work is uh, th there's some pre-nominated people uh, you know that from last year and some people have already sent some names in for nominations so when you get this list there might be 15 20 30 people per category Plus, there's a place for you to write in up to three additional people. And, and what you'll do when you get the ballot, it'll all be explained, is you'll basically, uh, you know, pick your top three, one, two, three, okay? And if they're not on the list, you write them in and put one, two, three. And, um, and from there, what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll develop that list, and from there, we'll, we'll do the count, and uh, the top five in each category will become finalists for the 2013 Control Trends Awards. So, uh, you know, to Kenny's point, we'll, we'll send these out a couple of times to make sure you get them. If you haven't registered to vote already, you can do so on the controltrends.org website. I mean, just click on where it says register to vote or the, the uh, control trends icon up in the right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, we'll ask you for information. Uh, we have to do this to make sure it's fair so somebody doesn't, you know, stuff the ballot box. But uh, we will not uh, share your information. We will not send your information. Um, we won't be sending you stuff that's not related to the Control Trends Award. So, uh, you know, we're very, very respectful of that. So please, if you haven't registered, register to vote. And those nomination ballots, the first round will come out uh, next week. Sometimes. So, Kenny, what I'd like to do, if, if, since we got a little bit of time here, is let's, why don't we talk about maybe five categ four or five categories from last year who won and, uh, you know, sort of what the, what the uh, criteria are so that, you know, we can just begin to break these categories down. Absolutely, Eric. I'd love to. And uh, one of the most important questions or, or interesting questions that we're asked constantly is, can we nominate ourselves? And, of course, you can. Uh, it's like a politician once said, uh, "Who'd you vote for?" Uh, you know, he went into the vote. He went into the voting uh, area. You know, pulled the curtains. You know, and then came out smiling. And then they asked him, "Who'd you vote for?" He goes, "Who do you think I voted for?" In other words, you know, yes, you can nominate yourself, uh, and 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 because you're doing something that you love to do, and, and whether you're a product specialist, whether you're a, a marketing guru for your company, whatever you do, yes, nominate your company. Make sure you get involved in the nomination process, and then energize and activate your community to support you. You know that's how that's how you, that's the, uh, those are the drivers right there. So um, by all means, yeah, Kenny. You know that that's a really good point. I mean, the intent is uh, for you to reach out to your community, uh, and we had one uh, company last year. I think they were nominated for four. They were up for four or five different categories. 
uh, for awards. And, you know, we talked to their marketing guy and, and he just, well, we're not going to send this out. We're, you know, we don't, we don't want to send this out to our database. We're not going to, you know, consequently they missed out on five awards. I mean, because the guy was just kind of short sighted. We're not comfortable with, uh, you know, sending this out to our thing and we don't, you know, to our community and, you know, we don't want you guys to have their names and so on and so forth. So they lost, they had five opportunities to win. So uh, I think it really is important that you energize your community on that. That's, that's the only way you're going to win. And to some other people, what they ask about the finals is, well, you know, how am I going to compete against one of these huge companies that maybe has, uh, you know, a much larger customer base than I do? And, you know, Kenny and I have an algorithm for that that we've worked through. Because uh, other question is, can, you know, can my employees vote for me? And absolutely. So a big company can have all their employees vote for them. And that vote will count for something, but it's not going to count uh, as much as a customer vote. The customer's votes count the most. So we have a way to sort of uh, take into consideration the relative size of a company uh, and their community versus, uh, you know, so the small guys do have a chance. And I think that we, we, we saw that last year with some of the winners uh, last year. So Kenny, I've got that dialed in. So, but, but to Kenny's point, absolutely get your community involved. This is one of the best things you can do to have your community help support you. But not only that, you're going to be exposed uh, to the control trends community, which is worldwide. So you got to get behind this. And if, and if you become a finalist, please take the time to make a video because that's being shown to thousands and thousands of people. And some of them are your customers for sure, but then there are probably a lot that are not and might want to be once they find out what a great product you have. All right, let's just uh, let's just talk about the first category that we had last year, and that was uh, let's just say the um, the thermostat, the best thermostat of the year. And uh, and I'm doing that on purpose because we had that post by Clint. And we had those incentives, 525 incentives for thermostat rebates. But there's this concept called uh, co-opetition, and um, it's where the rigorous, and this is from the Clint article, by the way, I'm reading it, uh, so please visit that post. The rigorously fierce competition in the thermostat market has evolved into a most beneficial form of co-opetition. And the relationship and the competitive addition of technology to their products has caused the unintended congruence of that is growing all of the respective markets, all of their respective markets. So the participation that you do here, and even if you, you, know, you don't win by be participating, you're increasing your exposure in, in the marketplace. People might not have known about you and known some of the special features or what you do differently. And by participating as you win. Uh, unfortunately, at the end of the year, there will be one winner and it'll be determined by the, the voting community. But anybody that's participating, especially the five finalists, you're getting a great opportunity to share your information constantly, almost daily basis, only control trends. And uh, it really meant a lot to a lot of people. But I think some of the big, bigger companies failed to realize that you could be a big fish in a small pond, but if you don't have your community behind you, you know, uh, then you don't really have a. You're not going to do as well as a small fish in, in a small pond, where everybody in that community is voting for them and rooting for them, and it really won out. So uh, last year we had uh, the finalists. Uh, actually, let's just start with the uh, the thermostats that were nominated last last year, uh, Eric. It was, um, and there were some really interesting uh, thermostats. Uh, let's see here. I, I got my uh, papers a little bit jumbled there, but uh, we had the Honeywell Redlink thermostat, the Nest thermostat, Ecobee Smart thermostat, Lux products. I never really knew of them. Uh, the Maverick IP MT201, the Honeywell Prestige, White Rogers 1F85 277, the Viconics VT7600 series, Ventstar Color Touch series, Iris Smart Hunter Max. They were thermostats here that I, I've sold thermostats for 30 years and I, I have not heard of them. And of course, we had the InTouch EMS stat and an OmniStat too, just to give you an idea of how ver the variety of uh, people that were put into that category. And then, of course, the people that voted for their favorites uh, led to the top five being the, uh, no the nominated uh, thermostats that went on for the final vote. And inevitably, Viconics won that thermostat category. Yeah, it was a really exciting race there. So, yeah, the thermos, so the thermostat, like you said, there's been, a, a, I think, a lot of positive developments on the thermostat front in the uh, last year. So that's going to be really, really good, Kenny. So, okay, so what are the categories we're going to talk about today? Um, well, I'll tell you, Eric, uh, again, we're, there, this is really interesting. The best variable frequency drive, that was another one where – we had Tico Westinghouse, Airbnb, Honeywell Smart VFD, Johnson, Yaskawa, Danfoss, Square D, Emerson, and Siemens. And uh, of those, uh, we never heard a word from Square D, 
Airbnb came on board at, at, you know, after the nomination period was closed, and, and unfortunately it was not successful. Uh, you had a really close race between Tico Westinghouse, Johnson, Honeywell, Yaskawa, and Siemens. And uh, I think invariably uh, the Honeywell Smart VFD won. Uh, it was just because uh, Honeywell did a great job, and uh, they did a great um, video presentation. They got behind the product and generated a lot of response. So that, well, that and, was another- and they also have just an incredible incredible drive i mean that is uh, that's a great drive so uh yeah you're right and and honeywell did get behind it i know that uh botico and johnson controls have uh, sort of beefed their drives up this year we haven't heard from abb yet we, we don't know anything with abb i know yaskawa is, was a strong competitor so it'll be interesting to see if uh if new people get involved this year uh you know especially abb we'd be very interested to see you know what their community does as well as um Square D. So that was an, another exciting race. And uh, Kenny, who, who do we have next? Well, I, I, we've got two more that I, I think we can go over here before we, we um, yep. use up all our time. Eric, the best building energy management application of the year. We had Johnson Controls Panoptics. Uh, we had uh, Lobos by Interlance. We had Echelon, Active Logic Periscope, Eastside Energy, EFT, Optima Energy, Building IQ, CSI3 Cubed. Uh, Profit and Building uh, Logics, Energy Logics uh, were the, the uh, nominations last year. And um, uh, this uh, Johnson Controls Panoptics won. Uh, apparently, that was a very popular. Uh, and that just showed you neither one of our companies uh, even uh, represented that, that, that product. And yet, the people that, that were watching and involved in the control trends uh, voted for it and it won. Yeah, that was a real surprise, and and I think that's a testament to the fact that you know so much of the so many of the control trends community members are end users and uh that was you know if you look at that voting that's what really sort of pushed those guys over the big top was their end user uh database got involved and uh, and, and it's a great product anyway but yeah to the point of that that product does not come through distribution that's actually a branch product and that was quite a surprise that that product won but uh what i understand it's a great product and again, if you look at uh, some of the players we have now, it's going to be very interesting to see how J2 Innovation, uh, DG Logics, and some of these other guys, and of course, you know, Jack Berry Hill and those guys with Active Logics. So those guys didn't stand still this year. They continued to develop the product. And then, then there's our friend John Petsy with Sky Foundry. So this could be a very, very interesting race this year. All right, and the uh, last one we'll talk about is a commercial product of the year. Um, we had Belimo Energy Valve, Siemens Pressure Independent uh, Control Valve, Johnson Control Systems 450, Viconics Thermostats, ACI, Testo, TAC Cassia, Nest Thermostat, Echo B Smart uh, SI, Intouched EMS, Bacharach, Honeywell Analytics, and... Watt Stopper, Logica Lighting, and Siemens. I mean, so there was no, you know, that was one of those categories where we let people decide what they thought the commercial product of the year was. And as it turned out, the Belimo Energy Valve was enormously known, well known, and well supported. And um, it won last year. The the, the that MIT study valve that uh, Belimo Energy Valve won. And uh, I know Belimo. Uh, I don't know how they were, but they were de- definitely delighted. And and we were. We were kind of just curious uh, how, how that was going to shape up and who, who had uh, the community support to support their uh, commercial product of the year. Well, and I think, I think that, you know, that really did shake it, right, because that product does save a lot of energy. It was a unique product that got introduced, and, uh, and we deliberately made that category generic enough that if somebody like, you know, Jim Loffrey and his Switch Genie, and you got a lot of attention with that too, but if somebody came up with a unique product, you know, and, and it's going to be true this year, too. If there's a unique product out there, it doesn't have to be a controller, but if it is a commercial product, I mean, that could be anything from a boiler control system to, uh, you know, uh, a functional devices piece or, or whatever. So it'll be very interesting this year to see uh, what kind of people get written in and who the five finalists are. And, of course, Kenny and I will keep you posted on who the finalists are. So stay tuned to controltrends.org for all your Control Trends awards. 
uh, want to give a special thanks again to uh, DG Logics, uh, our sponsors this week. Also want to say thanks very much again to Honeywell for all the great hospitality up there. Uh, had an opportunity to speak with Tom Ross back up at Honeywell, and, and I think Tom's going to be coming on to uh, do a couple of interviews with us to tell us about Honeywell's direction and what they are what they got going on. So we're looking forward to that. Joe Carr Carroll will be coming on here in a couple of weeks for Belimo Tech Talk. We'll keep you posted on that as well. we got another social media, HVAC and the social media coming up Kenny so a lot going on here stay tuned stay tuned to controltrends.org for all that and uh, as usual buddy it's been great thanks for taking the time to stop in and do control talk now I'm Eric Stromquist he's Ken Smyers you've been listening to control talk now indeed